do you want from me? Why are you calling me? Leave me alone. Were you doing something important? Um, Never mind, I don't want to know. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for the... Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction scene. It's I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you also on Patreon, follow an official Twitter account, ring the bell to be part of the notification squad. Bang! I wonder what I had for lunch today. Uh, a chicken. You murderer. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, oh, also, since we're doing a bunch on those channels, follow us on our official solo channels. Rick yes, is, please. Rick is doing a... What are you doing right now, Rick? I am about to do the beginning of a series of things called Afterthoughts, which are basically some afterthoughts whenever you and I are reacting to something, and there's a ton of comments in there from stupid babies, and they're wanting to hear more, especially interviews. Like, they're wanting to hear more about what it was like to interview Nawaz. So I'm going to start doing those on a regular basis. And then um, I have Leland and you, you are, <laughs> you are the channel. And you are the... That's You are the Gordon Ramsay of India, my friend. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Anyways, <laughs> today we're doing a movie review of a Malolium film because we love the Malolium's and we love Fahat Fasil and, um, you know, yeah. Uh, but we are <laughs> reviewing a film that I cannot pronounce. So, come Rick, on, why don't come you on, just Corbin. go ahead and try? Give it, it, the old, give it the old college try. Sonde Marshall Direct it sounds like Dothraki. Oh <laughs> it's Dothraki. It sounds like Dothraki is what it sounds like coming from me. I can't, it I can't pronounce it. How do you pronounce it? <laughs> I'm going to give it the old college try. I believe it's Thondi Mathalam Drixaxium. Hands down one of the hardest titles we've ever come across. Without question. And and actually, the, the my understanding that the English translation of that is pretty quite simple it's it's called the manor and the witness oh that makes sense but yeah that is that is a really complicated title for uh very for, for, for a very simple uh concept but yeah you want to read the synopsis for me i do prasad and srija enter wedlock and they move to a new place to continue the rest of their lives unfortunate events begin to take place after prasad a small-time thief Rob Srija's gold chain during a bus journey, or does he? <laughs> it's directed by, uh, Del say his name? Delish Pothan. Who also directed the other film, uh, we just reacted to the trailer just a few days ago. He, that was, I believe, his first film. I think this was his second, or it's the other way around. I could, I, I one of the two. Uh, yeah, I know, I know he's only done two. Obviously starring, uh, Fahat Fasil. Uh, yep. and say the other people for me, Rick, please. Yeah, and also give some, uh, we'll give a, a, some credit here to the, the uh, Sajiv Pazur, who mm -hmm. wrote the dialogue, the writer and cinematographer Rajiv Ravi, mm. and the music by Bishbal, if I'm mispronouncing that, very, very sorry, but along with Fahad Fasil is uh, Suraj Vinjara Mudu. And then say the girl's name, because she's the other main one. Yeah, Namisha Sajayan. Yes. Um, so yes, this is going to be a spoiler review. Go watch it if you haven't seen it and come back if you don't want to be spoiled. Uh, Malalium people, you have seen it, so enjoy the review. And if you haven't seen it, which I know a lot of you haven't because a lot of you are Hindi speaking only or other regions, just g g explore other regions. I, I see people just like Americans that like, I don't like to read subtitles. I'm like, get past subtitles, please, guys. Like there's, there's so many other film industries it, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Hindi. If you don't speak the language, Chinese, Korean, there's just, there's just, don't limit yourself to what language you speak. That's just my Amen, brother. Uh, soapbox there. Anyways, so initial thoughts, Rick. Initial thoughts. Um, I, I actually wrote, I don't have to read it right now, but at some point I will. I wrote a paragraph. I wrote like six sentences about what this film did. Ultimately, I, I think this is one of the most cinematically intelligent films um, we've seen, uh, mm -hmm. and one of my opening sentences is, is that this film sneaks up on you if you let it. And if you aren't yeah. careful, it'll, uh, it, it'll slip away without you ever knowing what it was trying to tell you. If you're not paying attention, it's, it's like a thief itself. 
works. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like yeah. it's it's a hundred percent a fly on the will a fly on the wall film almost at times. Um, where you just you're like you're just witnessing something happening and you're like, Why why is this in, why is this important? Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you then, could you could get you could get you could get bored if you're not paying attention cinematically to what the director's doing. But then they bring it back um, like so many different times, so like Okay, we could just we could kind of get in just get into it. Um, I I will say I I I really enjoyed the film, not as much as I enjoyed Kumbalaji Nights, but I still real and I think there's actually some parts of this that might like the cinematography in this was impeccable. But it's also the same guy who did Gangs of Wasiper and um, what's his uh, what, what a shock. What, what was the other one? Uh, yeah, Gangs of Wasiper, Dev D, and I think there's another one. Um, so like he's a really good cinematographer, uh, but so we could talk about that first. But like the cinematography in this was impeccable. There was some tracking, sh- like I think it was one of the first things when they introduced you to the police, the tracking mm-hmm. shot that it went for almost three or four minutes. It felt like mm-hmm. they tracked yeah. you from the water until they got to the police station. Yeah, uh, and, and that's it's more complicated than it sounds to get a tracking shot correct. Yeah, and way more complicated to give you a film whose half of the film takes place in this tiny little police station that has virtually nothing in it that's aesthetically pleasing. And the lighting and the cinematography kept you engaged the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, yeah. One of, that's one of the things I, um, I'm loving. And there was a couple shots with uh, Fahat Fazil where he was in the shadows and he was in one lighting here and then they had him yes. come up. And I, I think you remember. The, I think you know the shot. He comes up, and it's a completely different lighting, but it's so beautiful uh, the way it's done. It just it gets you excited sometimes. Yes, there was the a, there was shot. another shot, another shot where he went downstairs to get a drink, and you got it from Prasad, the other Prasad's perspective, and all you saw was Fahad Fasil's shadow drinking the water. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and it was just really, really well done, as was the music. I thought the music was beautiful. Yeah, at times it was of such a quirky, quirky, especially <laughs> towards the beginning. Uh, yeah. It was, su- it was almost like, um, remember like at the beginning when we saw like some Amir Khan films and they did those like whistles, like... Droom! That was... I was right? just gonna say I was waiting. There were time I was literally gonna say that 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 there were moments you're waiting for the thwee. yeah. But it yeah, was like, it was more artistically done than that. They weren't doing it to like right. oh laugh at this, but they like artistically put it into the score, and I thought it was really yeah. really impressive that way. Um, so I liked that a lot. We could talk about Fahad Fasil. I think Fahad Fasil is one of the most brilliant actors. Like obviously we loved him from Kumbalaji Nights, right? But this is a completely different character. Than Kumbalaji yep. Nights, and you know I yep. love that the uh, actors that can like mold into different roles, and like he didn't like he wasn't even under a, a lot of makeup, so he could have like and he had the same mustache, and so he could have mm-hmm. very well been the same, but he was a you almost couldn't recognize that it was the same actor playing that role, except at yeah. times when he would stare at camera and he would do that that creepy grin that he has, like yeah. <laughs> I think it was like when they were X-raying him, he just turned to the camera and kind of smiled. Yeah, <laughs> which which really helps with this character because if we hadn't been introduced to him, I don't think we would have enjoyed this character as much because uh, it's like when you watch any actor that you've seen in many roles, there is that side of him we've already seen. So we're waiting. Is he going to flip a switch here on us any moment? Is he yeah. going to – like, like uh, we, when we first saw Ranveer and Gully Boy, we didn't expect him to do anything flamboyant, which everybody else would be watching him going, when's it going to snap? When's yeah. that wild man coming out? So, yeah, I – I loved those little shots I had. Yeah, those. Uh, I thought I, so. I think he did really brilliant in this. The this whole movie had some really like brilliant scenes, and like you were saying, in the middle, um, it. The only reason I didn't like it as much as like Kumbalaji Nights was because some parts did just drag a tiny bit in the middle bit of it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I think it's what you were saying. I think it was almost on purpose. Actually, they wanted you to feel in the place, like it was taking a long time. I think. Yeah. Is that and what you I, felt as well? Yeah, and that might be a good place for me to to, to talk about, you tell me, the, that paragraph I wrote, that for me is the larger picture for this, mm-hmm. which is, um, I'll just read what I wrote. Uh, it's a film of overt stealth and blatant subtlety. Yeah, hey, that's good. That's a good line. 
showing us things with the sleight of hand of a master magician or better yet a common thief. What you think you're seeing is a main story about a stolen necklace, but that isn't really the main story. Mm -hmm. Who you think are the main players aren't really the main players, because this isn't a movie about a thief who stole a necklace from a napping girl. It's a scathing, biting satire that doesn't so much take big chunks out of what's wrong with society, but takes tiny, slow nibbles with the necklace itself playing the role of antagonist. It's silent, unseen presence bringing out the true colors of the corrupt. In a word, it's a film about hypocrisy and corruption and how one... Sometimes even the most honest are forced to play the game if they want truth and justice to actually prevail. And two, good people do bad things and bad people do good things. That's a good line, Rick. That's a good synopsis of the film. I like that a lot. Well, that, that, that's what I meant in the opening about. It's like one of the most cinematically intelligent films. And you're right. There's points, and I think it's on purpose, where think, the director's lulling you, like like taking a little hypnotizing you and is saying getting, is this getting tiring is it mm -hmm. are you are you gonna get this and it's it's um remember when we walked out of us and we said the people who need to see this the most won't yeah yeah i feel the same way about this i think the the very people that this points the finger at about corruption would never see it and even if they did they they would just get lulled to sleep by it yeah, a hundred percent. Like, is if you're not paying attention, obviously this film is saying a lot more than like. Oh. Uh, because one, I I love, I liked a lot how it ended. Um, Me too. Because it one, it didn't tie everything up at all. Um, nope. He, so he he basically found he found the Fahat's character told him where the the necklace was. He went, he found it, but then he writes a note. And you don't know what the note says, and you don't know how long Fahat was in jail, but right. he's, he's out now. And right. so you don't know if they retracted their statement. You don't know what happened. And also, like, one of the things we thought was going to happen was, like, are they, are they going to invite him to work on their um, uh, farm? But no, they didn't do that. Right. He's just walking off into the yeah. sunset. He's like, what's going to – his life goes on. Their life goes on. Um, and I think that's it's really brilliant. Um, did you like this more or less than uh, Cobology Nights? That's hard to say, honestly. I would yeah. say that I uh, the movie I would watch way more often is Cobology Nights. Yeah. I, I would just watch that because it has a it, it doesn't have a hidden message in any way. It's very direct in what it's telling you. It's a direct story. It's beautiful. Um, I love the moral to the story. This is one of those that's like a study in cinema. And to yeah. see, this is like one of those movies I would I would show to aspiring directors and writers that and say, look, if you there there is a place obviously for you to do a, a blatant mirror up to society. The most recent one in American cinema would be Joker. Mm -hmm. where it's like this is who we are, everybody, and this is wrong. Yeah. And then there's ways that you might even have to. Uh, tell a story in, a, in a, a more subtle way. You can't be as overt with yeah. your rebellion and your saying, here's what's wrong with the system. And yeah. and the, the writing and directing covers a lot of just like one line to talk about something that makes you go, huh, like just just a simple line where they're there and he says, so is, okay, so th is this a love marriage? <laughs> there, That's a just that little moment right there was that wasn't a throwaway. There was a lot, and I heard a rumor. Um, uh, I, I saw like online um, after we watched it that almost all, except for the guy who was about to be fired, who was going to go live with his daughter and retire. You know that guy mm -hmm. that was about to be mm -hmm. fired if he if they didn't catch the guy. Right. He, he was the only actor. The others were real policemen. Wow. Well. well. So the whole guys, ensemble, you believable. Guys can, you guys can tell us if that's true. If like the the main chief is like not an wow. actor, and like all these people aren't actors, they're just policemen because they were really. And that's one of the things I want to talk about. The um, police scene was almost as good as the ugly scene, right? That you just read my mind again. It's like, exactly what reminded me of. It was almost as good as the ugly scene uh, in the police <laughs> yep, station. Almost. When, when when there he's trying to figure out what's going on and then he just gets up and starts asking the rest he's like why did you hit him <laughs> yes yes i was just i was dying laughing during that scene i thought it was so funny uh yeah. he just he just like now it's like the biggest thing is why did you hit him why yeah why why why'd you <laughs> i know 
<laughs> right. No, I agree. It, that's exactly what it was reminiscent that, of. And I felt all of the performances and, 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 and Namisha, there were moments with Namisha where she reminded me of Kajol sometimes when they got up pretty uh-huh. close to her face. It was very reminiscent to me of her. And I thought uh, everybody was, even the smaller roles, there were no hollow characters. And you know what I mean when I say that. One of the things I'm loving about Malalium in the three films we've seen, and I know it's not a lot, but even in Virus, which we, we liked, but we didn't love. Mm-hmm, uh, but we still liked it. But it's never the acting is a problem. The acting is never a problem. Nope, which, never. It, for from act- everybody. For actors, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it really, it's it really wonderful. Makes, it, it makes a movie that you might otherwise not have enjoyed worth watching because there, there's, I mean, we may be biased, uh, admittedly, but uh, I can watch actors act all day long. Uh-huh. Uh, as, if it's good acting, and, and maybe the cinematography isn't great, the score isn't great, maybe the story itself isn't great, but I've got some great actors, I'm good to go. Yeah, yeah, so that was great. And then that, that same actor who was the main, I believe, chief of the police station, um, the, guy, the young guy with the mustache, um, he had a couple great scenes. Like, one, when that one... It was it was a long scene, but these people came in and they were talking to him. They said, "This guy slapped me, and I need you to uh, I need you to punish him." Yeah, yeah, and toward it, the front of the film. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and he was dealing with that, and then he went out, and then I think he beat uh, Fahad Fasil's character. I think it was right. Yeah. Uh, and then he came back in, and they were like, and they kind of just resolved it really quickly. <laughs> and there was a lot of little subtle things in the film that were just super super funny that weren't like slapstick like um uh even though i know you guys love the film the boohoo film with akshay that they were almost blatantly trying to make you laugh i don't think they were trying to make you laugh in here these are just funny situations that's hilarious funny situations and uh, and little subtle things about the characters as well we always talk about this that in film show don't tell mm-hmm. and there was a moment when both uh, of the Prasads were in the river fighting and he wasn't letting them go. <laughs> First of all, that was one of my favorite scenes. The, the river Great scene, scene was phenomenal. Just Great everything scene. from the cinematography to the choreography to just yes. every, like when Fahad Fasil at the end just turned around and, <laughs> and he was still holding up. Oh, I was dying. Yeah. Anyways, go on. But there's, Sorry. A, there's a moment in that where Fahad Fasil's Prasad <laughs> He's got a big rock in his hand. Yeah. And He's I about thought, you want to get away, crush his head. But he doesn't. And that's because mm-hmm. this thief, this bad guy, the supposed antagonist, for all intents and purposes, it's not that simple. No. It's not that simple. There's yeah. reasons he's doing what he's doing. And he's actually a soft, generous person who we never even get to know why he was stealing. But the subtext that's given to this guy is... Don't cast stones on this guy before you look at yourself yeah. because you don't know why he's a thief. The police kept saying, like, I know this guy. He's a, he's, he, he will yeah. steal from anybody, blah, blah, blah. They're categorizing him like that. But um, yep. I think one of the thing, biggest messages that this film was trying to get across was that old, um, I don't know if it's an adage, but, like, would you steal bread to feed your family? Yes, exactly. That's basically what I think they were trying to get across. Like, good people will steal if they need to uh, eat or do basic get basic human necessities to live. Yes. Uh, and do, but it doesn't make them bad people. Um, right. And, and, and I found even the subtlety, for example, of what was the obvious but not overt. It was such smart writing and directing. The obvious and not overt corruption of the police. Because we've seen it depicted just straightforward corruption, just direct. That's a very this wasn't common theme direct. in Indian cinema, yeah. Very common because it's a common occurrence. Yeah. But what I loved was this juxtaposition of all of this corruption mm-hmm. taking place right next to this temple. Mm-hmm. And, and it wasn't the police who figured out a fight was going to break out. It was the thief. <laughs> the fight's going to break <laughs> he's, out. <laughs> he's, he's the guy who can sense what's going on over there better than the police can. Yeah, uh, just all of these really intelligent, subtle, seemingly yeah. – the, 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 can anybody – it's like the director and the writer were saying, can, does anybody else see the incongruencies and the hypocrisy in our society right now? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point it out 
kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was it was it, it was a really brilliant film and the only reason I brilliant. say I, I like Kumbology Nights more is cuz I could watch Kumbology Nights more. That's it. Uh, because That's all. I in Kumbology Nights I never got bored. And I think like no. we were saying I think this film intentionally bored you at times. Because yeah. it, 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 that's what it wanted to do in the film. And so I don't hold that against it. It's just in terms of favorites, if I had to rank and I like to rank, Kumbology Nights and then this would be right there currently in terms of uh, uh, Malalium films. Um, and so that's great. But I do want to talk about one more person. The uh, What's his name? Sujar. Yes, Suraj. What? Forgive us, sir. It, it, Suraj Benjuramundo. It felt like I've seen him before. I don't know if it, he it, just has that face of like an everyman face. Um, yeah, there was a familiarity. I agree. I can't. Def- I wouldn't definitively say we have seen him. He had, um, a, he had an innocence about him that I liked a lot. And that was the other thing about him too. Like at the beginning of the film, the the, the writer and the director was going to kind of like my very first note that I wrote down was, "Hey, people, people should mind their own business. Don't start yeah. spreading news about a girl because she just bought a pregnancy kit." Yeah. You know, and then when he's getting on the bus, he says, you know, he's kind of blaming her for the necklace being stolen. Yeah. But that's what I mean by these aren't hollow characters. Yeah, Everybody's complex. complex and even even people of the, the highest moral standards, they're going to do crappy things. They're going to say crappy things sometimes yeah. and they'll do it intentionally. And they're like, man, why did I do that? You know, I just it was just a smart, yeah. smart, smart movie. I thought they also did some intelligent commentary on the cast system because this was it was very subtle almost subtle. in this film. But it, obviously yep. these two people were in different casts and the girl was dealing with that. I'm assuming she was a higher cast. Um, yep. dealing with her parents and family her parents not yep. approving um, but it, it, I think the conversation with the dad on the phone he says don't come here for a few years but you know I'll I think he I think he said I'll help you with money right he did he yeah. did and that's that's where like those little things even it covers so much it covered caste system it covered love marriage versus arranged it covered corruption and hypocrisy and it covered and when it and it did it i just grabbed a, a penny it's almost like at the beginning of the movie it's like hey guys look look here's some toxic masculinity <gasps> oh wait a minute what else are we going to show you now it's like <laughs> these little tiny little moments of really beautiful uh holding up the mirror to society but doing it in such a subtle way that unfortunately those who would need to hear it and learn from it might see this film and go, well, that was boring. Can I go see something? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, great uh, yeah that was great. Um, a plus. L- liked it a lot. Um, so, yeah. By the way, I, I got, I'm sure there's comments rolling all over the place from this. Did you cut your finger on your channel cooking? I saw the band aid on your finger. <laughs> no. You did, didn't you? No? Well, no uh, hold on. Oh, okay. What was it? Actually, it wasn't on the channel. But it was, it was something. While you were prepping, it was while I was prepping. I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a blender because we made Lassie, and I was, I was trying to clean it, and I put my hand in to take out the the blades because they come yeah. out, and I went too far, and my like, like hand sliced on the blade. <laughs> and it was, you have a like, yeah. legit cooking channel now, man. You've you've spilled blood over that thing. I'm barely, yeah, I'm barely cook, guys. Don't, don't, <laughs> please don't, please don't get your hopes up for my cooking uh, skills. It's more for the stupidity than the cooking. <laughs> and Leland, of course, he's there. But anyways, uh, yeah, so let us, please let us know, because you know I'm obsessed now. What's next for Hot Fazil? I know that film that we just watched a trailer for is also by the same director. It's highly recommended. Um, uh, and I know, obviously, he's probably one of the best, if not the best, to come out of Mal- Malalium in terms of current actors. So let us know what of his films we should watch next, because I want to explore him a ton. And what's next in terms of M- Malalium films uh, yep. that we should watch next? Because uh, I think we're hooked. Uh, three and, men. And, and all of you, we don't don't lose hope, everybody. You folks that were excited about the Tamil reaction we just did, and it's available on Amazon Prime. We hear you. We're not ignoring you. It's coming. And Telugu, we got you. Don't give up. Guys, there's a lot of industries, and we have very little time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so... <laughs> I apologize. Um, but, yeah, let us know what we should watch next down below. Uh, and yes, Bengal. I hear you, my Bengali brothers and sisters. I know. We need we, to get to you as well. We just watched the Sacha Ray film, okay? Our 
stupid reactions. Tune in for